So this morning, I wanted to start looking at the concept of theming in an Angular application. Uh, I've never really used theming before, and I've certainly never implemented it. Um, and looking at some of the approaches in Angular, the most straightforward approach that I could find was the use of host context. Now, host context is a special feature inside of Angular component styling that allows dynamic properties to be added and removed based on conditions that exist outside of the current component. Now before we get into the code, let's just take a look at what we're going to be implementing. So here's a, uh, a sort of simple UI. It has a couple of embedded components here so that we can see the way the theming uh, propagates down through a component tree. And we have a light theme and I can go ahead and switch over to a dark theme and you can see that when I switch over to the dark theme, uh, all of the styles change to use some sort of a gray scale. Uh, it's not all the same color, it's not all the same background color, there's a lot of uh, slight variation here, and then of course I can switch back to the light theme. Now over in my elements panel here you can see that on my app component root I have this class light theme, and in fact if I switch over to dark theme you'll see that that CSS class here switches over to dark theme. So what we're going to be using is the host context selector is going to be based on the condition that this particular dark or light theme exists on the app component or more specifically on a, um, an ancestor component. So let's take a look at the code. So the first thing I did was I created a variables file for my, for my less. I define all of my component styles using less as opposed to just raw CSS and this allows for some uh, easier generation of markup. Uh, I created a less file because honestly that's just what I see people do. Every time I look into the concept of theming there tends to be some sort of a variables file that uh, defines the values that get used to implement the theme throughout the application. In retrospect this was way over complicated for this particular demo. If I could write the demo over again I would have foregone the less file here and just embedded all of these various color values in the various Angular components. But that's neither here nor there. Let's take a quick look at our root component. So here's the root component of our application and what we can see here on the host bindings is a definition for that light theme and dark theme that we were seeing in the element panel. Right? If we jump back over to the browser that's this light theme and dark theme that we're seeing here on the app component. So we're using uh, we're, we're defining that based on this public variable theme and you can see here in the footer this light theme dark theme link all it does is go ahead and change the value of that theme variable so the components in this application do almost nothing all of the interesting logic is actually in the styling itself now once we have this light theme and dark theme being conditionally added to the app component we can now start to use the host context bindings in our styling so for example in the app components less file, I'm using this host context here to define a global background and text color. And you can see if I, if the application exists in the context of the light theme, apply the light background color and the light color. And if the application exists in the host context of the dark theme, then use the dark background color and the dark color. And the rest of this is just layout stuff. Nothing here uh, is of much interest. Um, in this particular component, I'm using the host context bindings in the root of the file, but they don't have to be. Well, they don't have to be because I'm using less CSS. Now, less has some super interesting things like the ability to use the ampersand to build compound uh, selector paths, but it also has an interesting behavior where it allows us to invert the order of the segments in the selector. So if I jump to one of the other components, like my canvas component, oops, there we go. The canvas component, you'll see, actually has the host contact bindings defined inside other blocks. So in this case, it's inside of the canvas block. Uh, these ones down here are inside of the input block, and these ones down here are inside of the syllable block. Now, what you'll notice, however, is that we have the host binding, and then at the end of the host binding, we have the ampersand. The ampersand here, this trailing ampersand, actually renders uh, a, a CSS selector. It compiles down to a CSS selector that starts with host and then appends the parent to the end. So it allows us to essentially take the outer selector canvas 
and invert it when it renders it so the canvas comes at the end. And that essentially allows us to wrap uh, this entire um, selector and style property block inside of these various host context bindings. And you'll see, just with, as with the app component, we're saying here that if this canvas exists in the host context of the light theme, we're going to be using the light canvas color. And if this canvas exists in the host context of the dark theme, we're going to be using the dark canvas color. And the rest of the components are pretty much exactly like this. Uh, so I'm not really going to show anything else. Um, the, the key takeaway here is that all of the dynamic nature of the application is being driven by just this one CSS class or a set of CSS classes on that root component. And then all of the actual theming is being dynamically added and removed based on these host context bindings in the component styles. So the components themselves don't even really have to know about the theming. This is all uh, encapsulated quite nicely inside of the styling of the components. And um, I don't know, I, I found this to be a very straightforward and, and, and fairly easy to implement approach to theming. I don't know if this would work for, say, theming a third party set of components, like material design kind of a thing, but certainly for something that you're building on your own, uh, this feels like a really easy first step kind of getting your toe in the water, seeing how theming works, and starting to implement theming in your own Angular application.